hello uh, now we'll discuss regarding the design of shaft based on the strength now how the shaft can be designed what are different calculations are there uh, to design the shaft based on the strength now uh, strength means there are two types of strengths are there now shaft can be classified into the two category design of shaft can be classified into two category first one is the strength and second one is the rigidity and deflection now strength category further it can be subclassified into category that is the st uh, static loading strength with the static loading and strength with the fatigue loading fatigue loading means we are going to use the asme code then rigidity and deflection it is nothing but torsional rigidity and lateral rigidity now as it is the strength is there we'll use the equation m by i is equal to sigma by y is equal to e by rho rigidity means we'll use the equation t by j is equal to tau by r is equal to g theta by l <coughs> now first category that is the design of shaft against the static loading based on the strength now let us see how it can be designed now suppose uh, a shaft is there this, this diagram is more clear to us uh, this is the one shaft is available which is being mounted between the two bearings okay this cross means it is being shown as a bearing and a pulley is or a gear is available at the center and the torque is being applied now what are the types of free body diagram fbd will be there force diagram now suppose it is a helical gear is being mounted here it will else have a certain self weight will be there now as we know the helical gear will cre create the axial thrust that will be shown here then these two bearings will have a reaction it will create a reaction one and reaction two and it is being rotated with the help of a torque t now suppose uh, t is the twisting moment or torque then m is nothing but my bending moment f is the axial thrust is there then d is the diameter of shaft that which is to be evaluated then whenever a shaft is there it is having a uh, load is available what are, what are the different stresses will be available in the component let us see let us guess it now three different stresses will be there this w that is the self weight will create a bending movement bending movement means we have to use the equation m by i is equal to sigma by y is equal to e by rho now if we'll use the first two part m by i is equal to sigma by y therefore sigma is equal to m into y by i that is a bending stress then second one this torque will create a twisting stress or torsional shear stress torsional, now in very first class we have discussed the classification of stresses two stresses normal stress shear stress normal stress is being classified in two categories tensile and compressive and bending is a combination of tension and compression in category of shear torsional shear and normal shear now here there is the role of torsional shear Torsional shear means we have to use the equation T by J is equal to tau by R is equal to G theta by L where then from this you will get a tau is equal to uh, T into R divided by J where T is the torque, J is the polar moment of inertia, R is the distance of end fiber. Then next one direct tensile or compressive stress. This force will create a tensile or compressive stress. At this portion it is tension, at this portion it is a compression. That's why it is a tensile or compressive stress. Now it is a normal stress therefore force divided by area. Now generally the shaft is circular section having diameter of D therefore force divided by pi by 4 into D square. Let us see one by one. That is the first one. That is the torsional shear stress now as i have said we have to use the equation the flexural equation that is t by j is equal to tau by r is equal to g theta by l where t is a torque or twisting moment newton per mm j is the polar moment of inertia it is equal to the pi by 32 into d raised to 4 tau is the shear stress induced in the component r is the distance of end fiber from the neutral axis it is equal to the d by 2 g is the um, modulus of rigidity theta is the angle of twist and this L is the um, distance between the two supports area. 
now we will consider first two parameter using this we will calculate tau of torsion will be equal to t into r divided by j t into r divided by j as r is distance of end fiber is equal to d by 2 j is the pi by 32 into d raised to 4 if you are simplified you will get a 16 t divided by pi d cube is nothing but the tau of torsion okay then second one Second one is the bending stress is being developed due to the self weight of the helical gear. Now this self weight uh, will be evaluated by using the equation m by i is equal to sigma by y is equal to e by rho. Where m is the bending moment newton per mm, i is the mass moment of inertia, sigma b is the bending stress, y is the distance of end fiber, add is the circular section that will be equal to the d by 2, then e is the modulus of elasticity and e is the uh, we can say that is the distance of uh, uh, fibers then we will use the first two parameter m into y divided by i will be equal to the sigma b therefore m uh, m we have to evaluate from the figure by using a free body diagram as we have studied in the sum then d by 2 is distance of n fiber pi by 64 into d raised to 4 after simplification we will get the equation sigma b is equal to 32 m divided by pi d cube Okay, if you have seen, tau of torsion will be equal to 16 t divided by pi d cube. Sigma b is equal to 32 m divided by pi d cube. Then axial load, uh, in case of helical gain, it is going to develop. At right portion, it will create a tension. At left portion, it will create a compression. Tension is being taken as a positive. Compression is being taken as a negative. Therefore, sigma will be, direct will be equal to the f by a. Therefore, f divided by pi a is nothing but pi by 4 into d square as it is circular section. It is being, uh, if after simplification, you will get 4 f divided by pi d cube. But for the compression is negative and tensile is positive. Now, there are three different stresses are there. Tau of torsion, then sigma uh, b, a, then sigma direct. Now, sigma b, sigma direct, uh, sigma and tau of torsion. Sigma B and Sigma Direct can be combined directly because it falls in the same family. It falls in the same family. Therefore, we can find out a Sigma total will be equal to Sigma Direct plus Sigma B. Therefore, while value will be 32 m divided by pi d cube plus minus 4 m divided by pi d cube. Now, Sigma total and tau of torsion cannot be added directly because these are going to fall in the two different families and two different families cannot be added directly therefore we require certain external agency that external agency is called as a theory of failure therefore we'll uh, have a discussion what are the different theories of failure are available now Three different theories of failure are uh, generally are there. That is the maximum shear stress theory, maximum distortion energy theory, and maximum principal stress theory. Now let us see. We already discussed all, uh, studied all this thing in the second year in the sum. Uh, that is the first one, maximum shear stress theory of failure. It is being generally used for the ductile type of material. What is the statement of this? It says that failure of the mechanical components subjected to the stresses occurs when maximum shear stress at any point reaches the yield strength in shear of the material. It is a very big statement. What does it mean? That is failure of the mechanical component occurs okay subjected to the stresses subjected to the stresses occurs when maximum shear stress at any point reaches the yield strength in shear of the material that means tau max e should be less than or equal to yield strength in shear divided by factor of safety if tau max is greater than yield strength in shear then definitely it will fail now how to calculate yield strength in shear by using a maximum shear stress theory that is being taken as a 0.5 of SYT 
SYT is nothing but yield strength in tension. SSY is nothing but yield strength in shear. Therefore, the equation tau permissible for maximum shear stress theory is being taken as the point for you of SYT by FS. Let us see next one. Then uh, that is sigma total by using the equation. Equation will be given by the maximum shear stress theory. That is sigma tau max will be equal to the sigma total sigma divided by two square plus tau square. This is the generalized equation to add the two different tor uh, two different stresses. This is normal stress and this is the shear stress, which are going to fall into the two different category. We require addition of uh, some certain aid of a different agency, and that agency is nothing but maximum shear stress theory. We say that tau max is equal to sigma under root of sigma by two square plus tau square. Now sigma total is known to us that is 32 m divided by pi d cube plus 4 f divided by pi d square plus sigma uh, sig tau of torsion 16 t divided by pi d cube square raised to half. This should be equal to point for you of SYT by FS. And this theory is generally used for the ductile type of material and generally the shaft material is being taken as a ductile material. Therefore, this is the most popular theory in the design of shaft. Okay. Then the next theory is there. Next theory is maximum distortion energy theory of failure. It is also called as Hohenmeiss theory. It is used for the ductile material. Maximum shear is also used for ductile and maximum distortion energy theory is being also used for the ductile material. Now what does this statement of this theory? This failure of the mechanical component subjected to the stresses occurs when the distortion energy per unit volume at any point in the component reaches the limiting distortion energy per unit volume at yield point in simple tension test. Now what do you mean by the distortion energy? It is the internal energy. It is the energy stored when the component is being deflected. What this Hohenmeister theory says? The failure of the component will occur when distortion energy per unit volume reaches the limiting distortion energy per unit volume at the yield point. That means we should know the, what is the distortion energy of that material. Distortion energy means if you want to find out a simple way of distortion energy, it is the strain energy. It is the internal energy. Now, how? What is the uh, formula for that? That is the sigma under root of sigma square plus three of tau square, and that is equal to the sigma. Therefore, we know that equation that is sigma total will be equal to 32 m divided by pi d cube plus 4 f divided by pi d square raised to 2 plus 3 into 16 t divided by pi d cube raised to square raised to half. That should be equal to the SYT by FS. Now, this theory is accurate and it is also widely used for the ductile type of a material. Then next theory is that it is a maximum principal stress theory. It is a least preferred theory. What is the statement for that? It is a failure of the mechanical component subject to the stresses occurs when maximum principal stresses at any point reaches the ultimate or the yield strength of a material. This theory is generally applicable for the brittle material because in brittle material yield and uh, yield point and ultimate point is same. Therefore, sigma is equal to the SYT by FS or SCT by FS and sigma total will be calculated as sigma by 2 square, sigma by 2 plus under root of sigma by 2 square plus tau square. This is a portion of a maximum CSS theory. That means I can say sigma max will be equal to sigma by 2 plus tau max of a maximum shear stress theory. And from this you will get again this equation. Therefore, if you simplify this equation by assuming f is equal to 0, that is it does not have um, uh, axial thrust, then you will get equation 32 m divided by pi d cube half of m plus under root of m square plus t square. 
okay um, now uh, with this we'll stop here uh, to uh, understand the concept of uh, how to design the shaft based on the static loading based on the strength thank you